Right you lot, let's talk Villa. Yes, welcome back to the channel everyone. No Twitter stuff today because this is a back-to-back -back filming from my last video, but we are previewing our trip, well not even trip, we're at Villa Park, but Newcastle's trip down to Villa Park in the Premier League on Tuesday. I will be there cheering the boys along in B6. Uh, and I'm excited to go, I'm excited for this game. It's a massive game, as you can see from the title, I think it's probably one of the biggest games of our season so far. Newcastle come in in bad form or baddish form with a lot of turmoil around certain players at the club. Some are leaving or some staying, some want to go, some don't want to go. Villa, obviously, having our own struggles with form at the moment. Have only scored one goal in our last three games. Back-to-back nil-nil -back draws and not looking too creative. So let's look into the starting lineup and how we might be able to change that, how we might be able to combat how Newcastle play, Newcastle's last lineup, and then ultimately my thoughts and predictions for the game on Tuesday. As always, if you're, if you're enjoying, guys, leave a like down below, comment your thoughts and your score predictions, and subscribe for more Aston Villa and Premier League content. We're coming towards the end of the transfer window. There will be one more transfer video on the way. But without further ado, let's get into how I would line Villa up, or how I think Villa might line up, for this game against Newcastle in the Premier League. So next to you, me, you can see, next to me, you can see, I don't know why that was a tongue twister, how I think Villa should line up, how I would line us up, considering how we've been playing recently for the game against Newcastle. Obviously, Emi Martinez in goal, he has been easily our best player over the last sort of four to five weeks or four to five games. Um, absolutely flawless. I can't, oh God, he is our lord and saviour. Moreno, left back, I don't think Luca Dina is going to be back ready. Obviously, the uh, pre-match press conference hasn't come out just yet, but he didn't feature against Chelsea, so I think he'll probably miss out. Centre-back partnership, I've gone for the same partnership that kept a clean sheet against Chelsea, and that is Longley and Concert. Again, I just think that Longley is a little bit better on the ball uh, than Diego Carlos, and Concert definitely should be playing centre-back, not right-back. I don't like him at right-back at all, uh, purely because he's so good at centre-back. Don't get me wrong, he's quality at right-back, but he needs to be in the middle for us. And look, since he's moved back to the middle, we've been keeping clean sheets. Three in a row, just saying. And then on the right-hand side, Obviously, Matty Cash reprising his role. I actually thought he had a really good game keeping Raheem Sterling quiet down that right-hand side for Villa. Um, so I think he has earned his, his chance to show uh, Unai Emery what he can do in the Premier League. Uh, our two midfielders, obviously, Louise and Kamara. I think they're easily our two best. Then Donka has now gone out on loan to Napoli and I wouldn't have started him anyway. We'll have Tim down on the bench. He might get some Premier League minutes um, under his belt if one of those two comes off. But I think those two have pretty much held down that starting midfield slots. Um, I mean, since the start of the season, let's be fair. Uh, out on the left, I've gone for John McGinn, um, reprising his role that he got so much success earlier in the season doing with that sort of inside 10 role. Um, Captain Fantastic, he really needs to lead us into a result against Newcastle here because I think it is a genuinely big, big game. And then out on the right, I have gone for Leon Bailey. Um, I think Diaby just needs a bit of a rest. Um, and as you can see up front, uh, in that split striker slash 10 role, I've gone for Yuri Telemans. Um, played there really, really well for us a couple of times this season and did impress me in that role. And like I say, Diaby just hasn't been effective and I think he could benefit from a bit of a rest, a bit of time on the bench and possibly using him as an impact sub. You know, Newcastle's defence possibly a little bit slow, trippy as ageing. Dan Byrne is six foot seven and he's just not the quickest or most mobile or agile defender in the world. So could we exploit that by bringing someone like Diaby who is absolutely electrically quick and agile uh, later on in the game when their leg is getting a bit tired? And I also think that Bailey and Telemans would be the best way to go. And then obviously Ollie Watkins blanked in his last six or seven games. Hopefully he can do something for us against Newcastle. It's going to be in Villa Park. We're going to be roaring. All of us are going to be roaring. I mean, we're going to want to revenge what happened earlier on in the season. And that's the team, I think, that could do it. So as you can see on the screen, we have Newcastle's last lineup. In terms of freshness, Aston Villa played yesterday as I am recording this video, and Newcastle played today. So Villa will have one extra day of rest over Newcastle. Newcastle also having to travel all the way down to London, which I think is like a what six, four, no, four, five hour drive. Um, so you know they're going to have to have that as well because they're travelling down to Craven Cottage. Their last lineup: Dubravka in goal. Dan Byrne left back, Botman and Shaw in the middle, Trippier right back, 
Gumarice, Miley, Longstaff, Almerian, Gordon and Isaac in a 4-3-3 attacking formation when they lost 3-2 to Man City. Obviously, I don't know what their team is going to be like today uh, in the FA Cup, whether they are going to rest players or not. But you look at that team, there are places for us to exploit. And also there is a little bit, not turmoil around Newcastle. I mean, they've, you know, their form has dipped. You know, people figuring out Addy Hale's tactical style. But they're missing the number one goalkeeper. Kieran Trippier, who was their captain in that game, has been heavily linked with a uh, move to Bayern Munich, which I believe he has green-lighted. But Newcastle don't want to let him go. Uh, Miggy Almirion, who I know the Newcastle fans don't particularly enjoy, has been linked with a move to Saudi Arabia, which, you know... The less said on that, the better, considering the owners of Newcastle and how they might be getting around FFP. But he's been linked with a move away. He's now signed a new contract, so there's a little bit of confusion there. I don't really understand that one. Callum Wilson has been linked with a move away to possibly Atletico Madrid, obviously not starting there. But, um, you know, you, you, you subtract, subtract from all of that their form, the fact they have a day's less rest than us. They're struggling in the league in terms of the fact they're 10th at the moment. Um, and there's a little bit of confusion, or not confusion, but a little bit of disruption around certain players at the club. That's a brilliant team. Bruno Gamarais is... Oof, what a centre mid he is. Uh, Isaac up front, I think, is brilliant. Anthony Gordon has really been showing why they paid so much money for him in the summer. And their defence has been relatively solid. You know, I really like Sven Botman. Obviously, Villa were linked with him as well. So it is going to be a really, really tough game. And because they play that 4-3-3, they might be able to overpower us a bit in that midfield. Obviously, at Villa Park, we like possession. Um, but nevertheless, a beatable team. But what a team as well. So moving on to my predictions for this game. What I think about this game, first of all. This could be the most important game of the season. At the time, the Man City and Arsenal week was massive. But we were in fantastic form going into those games. We won both of those games. But since those games, I feel like our level of play, our form, how we're implementing Emery's style and tactics has a little bit, and I don't want to sound too negative, but fallen off of a cliff. And we really need to refine that form that shot us into joint first in the Premier League around Christmas time. The form that found us going into that Man City game confident we could get a result and then absolutely battering them and winning 1-0. We need to recapture that. There's also the reverse fixture that we think about. First game of the season, 5-1 defeat. It was tough to take. And I'm sure the boys are going to know that and they're going to want to put that right. And I'm sure Emery will be drilling that into them. We've kept two clean sheets in a row. We're looking a little bit more solid at the back. Fair enough, Emmy Martinez has been playing like a man possessed. I mean, some no, actually, don't drug test that man, but... He might be on something. Um, but there's that. The emotion of it. you know, Us versus Newcastle seems to be a big game at the moment purely because we've both come into a little bit of money. Ours probably a bit cleaner. Um, and you know, we're both, we're both the others, aren't we? Pushing for top five, top four, top six now. And the big boys don't like it. And I feel like us and Newcastle could have a chance to upset the Premier League hierarchy here. But which one of us will do it? And that's what comes down to how those boys perform for 90 minutes in Birmingham on a cold Tuesday night in January next week. Like I said, I will be there. So my reaction, my post-match reaction, I'll try and get up as soon as possible. I'm confident and I'm not confident. We've, I know we can beat Newcastle. We've done it last year. We've beaten City this year comfortably. We've beaten Arsenal this year. We've beaten Chelsea this year. Obviously not in the FA Cup, but away from home. We beat Spurs away from home. We beat Brighton 5, 6, 1, whatever it was. But there's just that little bit of me that's just thinking the way we're playing and Newcastle are going to come out of the traps of a point to prove away from home, it's going to be tough. But I believe in Emery. I believe in the boys that we put out on the pitch every week. And by God, I believe in Aston Villa Football Club to get top four this season. But this is going to be pivotal. If we don't get a result this game, I could see, I could see us falling off of a cliff. I think our form has dipped. That's to be ex expected around the busy Christmas period. We need to pick it up now. And I'm always going to back the boys to pick it up. You know, I've got two predictions for this game. First one will go with what I think in my heart. And that is a 3-1 Aston Villa win. Isaac to grab a Newcastle goal. And then Watkins to score. Bailey to score. And I'm back in the boy. Esri Concert to get a goal from a corner. It's been coming. He's been coming so close. That's what my heart's telling me. My brain's telling me we're either going to draw or lose, but I don't want to think about that. 
I want to think about us winning. Let me know what your guys' score predictions are in the comments down below. I'll be putting up a poll on my Twitter shortly after recording this video to get your predictions in and we'll see what they're like in the next video when we record our post-match reaction. But as always guys, up the villa, be nice to everyone and I'll see you guys in Birmingham on Tuesday.